Photographing storms can be exhilarating, visually stunning and rewarding. But it can also be very dangerous. In this video I'll share some tips on how I like to keep myself safe when I'm photographing storms in landscape photography. This video is going to be broken up into three separate parts and those are stay ahead of the game, evade and stay. Now each one of those is going to make sense soon enough. But first a little disclaimer. When you're out photographing storms in landscape photography your main priority should be your well-being and safety at all times. Okay so here's some tips that I like to use to keep myself safe when I'm photographing storms in landscape photography. Firstly, you need to go and get yourself something like a weather radar app for your local area, something like this one. This is what I use on my iPhone. It's called Rain Radar AU. What it does, it shows me the size and direction of which the storms are coming. This Rain Radar AU app here in Australia not only allows me time to plan where to shoot the storm from, but also the distance the storm is away. By staying ahead of the storm, I'm out of harm's way from lightning, hail and strong wind. This radar app gives you the opportunity to photograph the storm from a safe distance. You can use a zoom lens to get closer shots of the storm as it approaches, or depending on the type of shot you're going for, a wider angle showing the enormity of the storm front. Here's some examples of a massive storm front coming across a peninsula towards this small jetty. By having the jetty in the foreground, this gives the viewer an idea of the scale of the storm. And speaking of scale, this image gives you an idea of just how big this storm front is. Taken from another angle, you can see these shipping port cranes are dwarfed in comparison to nature's fury. Another tip is if you have something like a drone, you can get some quite dramatic shots in video and stills of a storm front that's approaching from a safe distance away. So using that weather radar app, you can stay ahead of the game. But the main thing is, once that storm gets too close, make sure you land your drone immediately and get to shelter. The drone sample shot you're about to see will show that this storm was so massive I couldn't actually fit it all in in just shooting normal video or taking a single still frame. So I had to opt by shooting a multi-shot 180 degree pano that I stitched together in Photoshop. Just look at the size of this thing. The green tinge you can see is actually hail slamming down into the earth. And again, the foreground gives viewers an idea of the scale of the storm. That storm was actually from December 26, 2023. And that afternoon, that storm caused so much carnage. And as you can see from the photo, that storm front stretched for many miles. In fact, a lot of suburbs south of me, they lost power for up to a week. You should do some location scouting before you go and photograph storms because it's always good to have access to shelter quickly and as a backup plan. Close to where I live, I have selected locations that I can go to where I get good foreground interest that face north, south, east and west. For example, this jetty which points south had small shelters built into it that I could get under. Or alternatively, I could quickly jump in my car and head to the closest underground car park which I knew was just several hundred metres away. Okay, that's great. If you can get access to shelter, that's a real bonus. But what happens in the situation when you're out hiking and you're in the middle of absolutely nowhere and there's no shelter to be found anywhere? What do you do? 
Well, firstly, don't go looking for trees to hide under. That's one of the worst things you can possibly do in a lightning storm. Because lightning is looking for the nearest conductor to make contact with the earth, aka the tree, or even worse, you. Plus, in strong wind, that tree could very much topple over and fall on top of you, and that really would ruin your day. Secondly, get rid of things like this, the perfect lightning rod. Fold up metal tripods and lay them flat on the ground away from you. They'll be right if they get wet, you can just dry them off when you get home. Now when it comes to safety, you need to get as close to the ground as possible. Just think, make like a rock. Cover up your camera bag with a weatherproof cover and put it on your back. One, it protects your gear and two, it also protects you, or more specifically, your back from getting hit from any hail. Scrunch up in a little ball as close to the ground as you can and place your hands over the back of your head to protect your head from any hail. Because at the end of the day, your head is the last thing you want damaged on any part of your body because that's the thing that commands all parts of your body. Wait for the storm to pass, then get up and move on. I'd like to give you an example of this happening to somebody in real life. A friend of mine over in Austria, his name is Christian Ermler. He's a landscape photographer. And I'll leave you his video right here, you can go and check out. But what happened to him was he was out in a storm in the Austrian Alps where there was no shelter and he had to use those exact techniques that I just showed you to keep himself safe. If the storm you are photographing is near say a sunrise or a sunset time, do yourself a favor and try and stay until after the storm has passed. And this is, of course, if it's safe to do so. Because I think you'll see the light can turn dramatically. One of my absolute favorite things to do in landscape photography is photograph the tail end of storms at sunset. You'll get the most magic light sometimes in the sky and the landscape can take on a beautiful glow. There's an odd chance you'll capture some rainbows as well and more lightning as the storm moves away. I'll leave you some example videos right here and here of just how magic the light can be after a storm. But I'm gonna leave this video with just one very important message. No photograph is worth your life. Please, please stay safe at all times. Use your common sense. Never stop creating, and I'll see you next time.